I'm, I'm really honored to be here and um, I've been following Creative Mornings for a long time and um, so I was of course excited when I was asked. Thank you John, um, thank you Creative Mornings, thank you NPR, thank you guys for being here. Um, but when the topic when it became clear that the topic was transparency, I was even more on board because this is something that I've thought a lot about. Um, it's really important to me and it's been really relevant in my past year. Um, so I'm here to sort of share with you my story today in a very transparent way. And I guess I just ask you to, in that, you know, when we have questions and answers, f feel free to to ask whatever comes to mind. I think, um, especially in the creative community, and we'll talk about this later, it's so important for us to work together and for us to kind of break down silos and share resources um, and, and uh, yeah, work together as a community. So uh, without further ado, um, my name is Ashley Parsons. I would say I'm a dreamer and a builder. And what I've learned the most over the past four years is how to sort of ground those ideas and make sure that I'm not just building sandcastles in the, in the sky and um, that I'm, I'm, I'm creating something that's sustainable and that can survive um, over time. So my story, um, I was born and raised in New Jersey and I went to college at Colgate University in upstate New York. Um, and I don't think it was a good for, fit for me. It was a very small liberal arts school. I think I would have done better in a more like urban diverse environment. Um, so after college I felt pretty lost and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do and everyone seemed like they knew exactly what they wanted to do and I was like, oh, like shit. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I, the only thing that I was really interested in was yoga. So I decided to pursue a, a yoga teacher training, like a three week program out in San Francisco. So I packed my bags, went to San Francisco, fell in love with San Francisco. I was blown away. Um, at that time I met Ari Tamor, who some of you may know is my business partner. Um, we were romantic partners for a couple years until we realized that we should not be romantic partners, but instead we should be business partners, which has worked out really well for us. Um, so uh, he at that time was uh, just deciding to kind of depart from academia and public health, this idea of doing public health and go into kitchens. So he was doing what we would call staging, working in kitchens for free. Um, he helped open Flower and Water and he worked at some really great restaurants in San Francisco. And at the same time, I was just like blown away by the food scene in San Francisco, falling in love with farmers markets and Alice Waters and Mark Bittman and just like obsessively Daniel Patterson, all of them, just like blown away. So um, I started to think about how this could make sense in my head, but nothing really made sense because I was, you know, kind of raised on the path of academia and my sister is a doctor and nurse practitioner, like very set in that way. So I was like, how does this make sense? I don't understand it. So I kind of held that and then decided to do um, become a program coordinator and after school program in the Tenderloin, a free after school program with low income um, students five, ages five to 18. And this idea of wellness and, and health and the food that they were accessing was always on the back of my mind aligned with kind of this interest in restaurants, but still it didn't make sense to me. Um, so I, um, Ari and I actually ended up going to the south of France to work at a restaurant called Le Chassagnette, which is this beautiful restaurant if you ever get a chance to go um, in the Carmarg outside of Al. And it's on 500 acres of land. It's stunning and everything comes from the garden um, and goes right onto the table. So. Uh, it, I worked front of house and I learned Michelin star service. I learned a lot about the natural wine movement, which in 2010 was just starting to like boom, especially in France. And I was like, wow, like I could do this. Like I could go back to LA and create something or go back not at that time, LA, go back to the United States and, and, and open something like this. Um, and so then I came back and I was like, no way, I can't do that. <laughs> That's too scary. I don't know how, like, I got to go back on this path of academia. Like, it just, it, 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 that's what's comfortable. That's what my parents know. That's what my family knows. So I kind of left that. And, and this is 2012. And so I decided to get my master's in, in psychology. And so I went to Harvard. And I um, got my master's in human development psychology. And Ari and I were staying in touch. He, at that time, was um, sort of taking his first jobs as a chef, but realizing that he had to be his own boss, which was a difficult, uh, 
I think, thing to realize, especially when you have a boss. Um, so <laughs> he, uh, he ended up, I think, getting fired from a restaurant because he, he had to be his own boss. And uh, so he started doing these pop-ups, which maybe some of you know. This is 2012. Um, and so I'm at Harvard, and I'm at Harvard Medical School doing research on yoga in the schools, like, and working at Harvard Family Research Project, which, like, seemingly should be a great job, and I should be happy, and all these things, and I wasn't. I was, instead of, like, analyzing qualitative data, I would just sit on LA Eater and follow this story of Alma pop-up, and, like, how, like, I, just, like, how do I make that happen? But it seemed like, no, like, that's, that's a little too crazy. So I um, ended up calling up Ari and I was like, I really, I, I got it, I got a next thing, scratch the itch, um, which is kind of the term that I use. Uh, and I, I, I just had to go out to LA and see if I could make this happen because it was something that I, I kept trying to kind of put under the rug and it wasn't, it wasn't going there. It just kept springing out. So um, I love this quote by Mary Oliver um, where she says, the most regretful, regretful people on earth are those who felt the call to creative work, who felt their own creative power rest of an uprising and gave to it neither power nor time. So. That one really inspires me. Um, so I went. And so I, um, at that time, there was a lease that was available across what would become the Ace Hotel downtown. And downtown was getting all sorts of buzz about how it was the next hot spot. And so we were like, let's do this. The rent was really low. It was this tiny little place on Broadway, 952 South Broadway. And, um, and, and so we decided to open. So the first. Um, I think three to four months, it was like crickets. There was no one there. And that, you know, Ari didn't have a name for himself in LA, and I certainly didn't have a name for myself. Who's this girl like with a master's in psychology coming, opening a restaurant? Like, what's going on here? And so we got our first review by Patrick Koo from LA Magazine, and he sort of uh, put us on the map a little bit. And, um, and, and, and so it started to gain a little bit of traction. Um, that December, Jonathan Gold gave us a glowing review where he raved about our carrots. And I don't know, but like, I don't know if you've ever experienced this like power of Jonathan Gold, but he will transform your restaurant overnight. Like I didn't, even, we weren't even ready for it. He is, he just, he has, you know, such a following. So he really, we owe it to him and that review for, for, for everything that came after. Um, and so that the next six months were kind of this glorious time of um, Alma, floating and sailing, and maybe this is really going to happen. And it, it was really, it was really incredible. Um, and so that August, Bon Appetit named us Best New Restaurant in 2013, um, and we weren't ready for it. I mean, talk about power. Uh, we were actually closed that week because we were all taking, it was like five of us on staff and we were all taking like a one week vacation and they announced it and so our open table was down, our phones, we didn't even have a phone, like it was just a mess and we were getting all sorts of calls and you know not, none of us had a background in PR or any of these things and so we were learning as we, as we went. And, um, and it was kind of an exciting but totally overwhelming time um, because we just didn't expect that sort of success that quickly. Um, and I think that's a theme for some restaurants um, that, that you know start out with a small budget and kind of mom and pop and then they gain this notoriety and, 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 and I think um, aren't quite ready for it. Um, so, Flash forward to about like a year and a half later, um, uh, we um, had sought out advice from an advisor, someone, a patron who had been supportive of the restaurant and um, it didn't work out the way that we wanted so we kind of tried to part ways and unfortunately um, he's a very wealthy uh, man in entertainment and he sued us for all sorts of things, some that aren't even valid in California like unjust enrichment um, and uh, you know everyone was like it's okay like you're you know that means you're like successful you got a lawsuit like it's great <laughs> and I was like okay <laughs> we're gonna survive we'll be fine this is like two three years ago um, and 
it wasn't fine. It was expensive and we didn't know what we were doing and I had never, you know, been served papers before and it was totally overwhelming and horrible and uh, here's this man who has billions of dollars and we have like maybe $20,000 in the bank account at any given time, you know. Um, and so it started to, it started to drain us uh, pretty quickly. Um, and so, you know, we, we explored, we had an amazing support around us and we explored all sorts of ideas creatively of what we could do. And so we decided to come forward with the story and that was um, a little over a year ago. And so we did an Indiegogo campaign and I can't even tell you how incredible the support was. And I don't even think we've been able to properly thank everyone who supported us because it was just, we were able to raise forty thousand dollars, and the the sort of sort of stories that came out of this, and the um, the, the the sense of community uh, was just mind blowing. And uh, so we raised that money, and we thought we could make it work, and we couldn't. Um, restaurants are expensive, especially if they're slow, and it was the summer, so you know the summer in Los Angeles is quite slow. And um, we tried, but we actually a year ago next week closed downtown um, and and um, I'll go back and it was um, difficult and unfortunately the lawsuit is still going on and um, it's still draining my bank account and um, we ended up actually filing for personal and corporate bankruptcy to try to rid ourselves of this mess and it's still ongoing so it's been this sort of nightmare but I think the support around the community um, and the support from friends and family has allowed at least myself and I would say probably Ari as well um, to keep going. Um, so all the while, uh, this is sort of my baby. Um, when I came out to uh, Los Angeles, I, I said to the team, I said, you know, I'm only going to open this restaurant if we can do an outreach program. Um, very much inspired by some of the work of Alice Waters and, and um, uh, and just this idea of, of having a restaurant while simultaneously working within the community that you're living in. So Alma Community Outreach was founded uh, in 2012 when Alma Restaurant was founded. And um, it's basically a wellness curriculum where we teach gardening, cooking, and mindfulness exercises to low-income students in Rampart. So all of our work is done right now in Rampart, although we'd, we'd be um, really excited to go elsewhere with this. Um, we are in, as John mentioned, three charter schools, and then we also just um, started partnering with Breezy Foundation, which is a, a like a family services foundation in Rampart, and um, we were reaching about 150 students and parents on a weekly basis. Um, so this has been a, a really beautiful um, experience, especially amidst the nightmare of, of the lawsuit and the closing of the restaurant and this and that. So Alma version 2.0, um, we actually now are sort of like a consulting company, um, which has been like a huge lesson, I'll talk to this, uh, speak to this in a moment, but in flexibility um, and kind of this experience of letting go of your baby, your creative project. Um, I'm sure some of you have probably experienced that. Um, so we're, this is a photograph from, we're currently um, at the Standard in West Hollywood and we're, uh, we took over their entire food and beverage program to transform it to a more sustainable um, and uh, in terms of sourcing uh, the wine list is a natural wine list the craft uh, the cocktails are, are all artisanal made um, with local ingredients so that's been a huge um, lesson and just going from like a 39 seat restaurant to now suddenly you know a hotel with like room service and and I think they have 150 rooms or something like that um, we also did a pop-up at Cafe Henri, um, which is in New York City. Uh, we did it during New York Fashion Week and it was really sort of fun and kind of like an homage to the original pop-up days. So it's been um, light and, and um, exciting to kind of be able to close and then continue to move on.
So the lessons learned, um, I spoke to this a bit, but it definitely this idea of flexibility within creativity, um, I think it can be hard because creative personalities, you know, it's like, no, that line needs to be exactly right. <laughs> it needs to be straight, you know. Um, and, and so we get so focused on the details and the details are, of course, what makes it all so beautiful. But when we're doing a business, sometimes we need to be a little bit more creative. And so that's been a huge lesson uh, for me this past year of like, okay, no, you have to close your restaurant and now you are going to consult with a hotel, you know? And, and I think if I had been stubborn, um, none of this beauty of Alma 2.0 would have been able to happen. So it's been, um, it's been a huge learning lesson in that way. Transparency. Um, if, you know, the, just coming forth to the community last year when we were going through such a difficult time, that was very difficult. There was a lot of scrutiny. Um, there were a lot of difficult press pieces that were very anti-me, very anti-Alma. Um, and so it was difficult to be transparent, but it was also very important. Um, similarly with our staff, you know, we were, we were closing our restaurant. There was all this talk sort of going on outside. So it was very important day to day to speak very openly and very honestly with our team of, you know, which eventually became like family and, and still continue to be today because we all went through this really intense experience together. But it was really important to check in with them on a daily basis and make sure they were doing okay because it was an intense thing for them as well. Um, so transparency continues to be a huge uh, theme for me in my work. Um, trusting your gut, I, I, I think this one is important, especially when building your team around you. Um, uh, you know, I, I think it's important to make sure that you're working with people that you trust and people who are there for the right reasons. And if you get that sense of um, concern or skepticism about someone, trust that. I mean, I wish I had done that with this advisor. There were definitely some red flag moments that I should have paid more attention to and I didn't. Um, and then the last one, stay curious and ask questions. I think sometimes uh, we're too embarrassed to ask questions, especially when it comes to the world of accounting or bookkeeping or you know, taxes in the creative world especially. It's like, oh, I should just know that. But we don't know that. And we need to ask those questions because the fact of the matter is if we don't, then we will be in, in, in some serious trouble later on down the road. So um, this has been really important for me in terms of speaking to our lawyers, in terms of um, understanding how to bring a business through bankruptcy and move forward, understanding how to move th through all of these taxes um, and so um, this is, I think, one that we should really consider, um, especially as we're, you know, creative entrepreneurs and in, in this world of, um, in this business. And this is kind of an open topic for us to end with. Um, something that I've been thinking a lot about um, is this idea of the individual versus the community. And I think that um, some, I mentioned this before, but we often exist in these sort of silos and, you know, um, it, you know even the way Los Angeles is, um, is uh, mapped out, you know, we drive everywhere. We're not walking around and seeing every, uh, all the people around us. So I think that it's very easy to kind of stay in, in tunnel vision and to then sort of keep resources to ourselves and not share everything that we've experienced. And I really want to push myself and my community and, and the people I work with to, to lean on each other and to, especially within the create, creative community, to have an open dialogue about maybe sort of the struggles that we've gone through or the experiences that we've had the, so that someone else doesn't have to go through the same exact thing. Um, and, and yeah, so this is just something that's a little bit, that's been really on my mind lately. And I, I, I guess I would love to leave it on that. So thank you so much. Yeah.